we are thankful to the almighty God who has seen fit to allow us to assemble today. And we're thankful for the brethren who have led us in our worship service thus far. And as we said in the introduction, it is very important and because we seek to please God to do things as God has outlined. And we're, we're thankful for the brethren leading us uh, in worship thus far. In Ephesians chapter three, Ephesians the third chapter in verse 21, I'll begin with the scripture I wanna conclude with. Ephesians three and verse 21, Paul, the apostle Paul, writing to the church of Christ at Ephesus has this to say, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, all dispensations, all time frames. There wasn't a, a church in the first century, and now God says, well, you all create something new. Let me read it again. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. The old gospel, sound doctrine, one truth, one body, one church. There is no black church, white church, Hispanic church, a church just for Jews, a church just for Gentiles. This is the last lesson on our series, seven number of completeness, if you will. Our last lesson, we can keep this going all year almost, on the church of Christ. I would encourage every member to get all seven lessons. Share them with someone. You can't deny it. When we think about what was, what was stated, what was prophesied from Daniel to Micah to Isaiah to Zechariah, God's house began. The church of Christ began in Jerusalem about AD 33. And on that day, the Jews from all nations were added to that one body, the church of Christ. In Acts chapter 10, the house of Cornelius, the Gentile household, they were added. And so now, as Paul said, go to stand Ephesians chapter 3. Let's go back, if you will. So it's great about having a closing lesson, quote unquote, closing lesson on a series. You can kind of go fill in the gaps, if you will, to review, to make sure you all have some good notes. In Ephesians chapter 3, same, same book, same chapter. Let's look at verse 4. Paul says, Wherefore, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages, other time frames, other dispensations was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. What was the mystery, Paul? What was hidden? as we've taught in previous lessons that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. To our visiting friends, both in person and afar, if you want to be a Christian, you must obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is not through a sinner's prayer. It is not through just for me to send some money to some quote unquote televangelist. You must individually, as brother Damien, Mr. Damien Palmer did yesterday, now he's brother Damien Palmer, in Christ Jesus. He heard and believed the gospel, the good news, the glad tidings concerning Jesus Christ. He believed that with all his heart. He repented, he changed his mind, Luke 13, 3 and 5. He not only heard and believed the gospel, he changed his mind. He confessed Christ to be the son of the living God. He, he affirmed that I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. And upon that confession, he was immersed in water right behind me for, for the remission. To remit means to send away for the remission of his sins. And he was added. He didn't join. He wasn't voted in. Because if you're voted in, guess what? I got it. You can be voted out. That reminds me, my mother said to me, I brought you in this world. But that's a different context, a different lesson for another time. We'll teach that on family discipline. There was two of us growing up. One got more. Well, let me move on. <laughs> My big brother, he got he got a few, but I think I got most. But nevertheless, when Damien was baptized into Christ, that he followed the plan, the scheme of redemption, the plan of salvation that God Almighty established through his son, Jesus Christ. And today we want to take you to some scriptures that will just reinforce what it is 
that was in the mind of God before the foundation of the world, Ephesians 1 and verse 4. Time will not permit me to go back and give you a, a summary of all six lessons that preceded this one. Where are we going today? We talked about the church of Christ that was in the mind of God, the purpose of God to redeem mankind through his son. We talked about the promise and the prophecy, what was foretold and promised that was yet to come. We talked about, you know, again, purpose, promise, prophecy. We talked about preparation, how John the baptizer, not John, the head of a Baptist church, because there is no Baptist church in the Bible. There's only one church in the Bible. Amen. And so it is. John prepared the way of forerunner, as Isaiah said, the way, Isaiah, Isaiah 40 and verse 3, the voice of one crying, preaching in the wilderness. But John the Baptist himself, John the baptizer himself said, I am not the Christ. He is not the light. The one that's after, that comes after me was preferred before me because he was before me. Because in the beginning, John chapter 1 was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. John 1 in verse 14 and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth why do i touch on that in the intro because watch where we go with this look at that watch the power of god's word and we recognize that there was not only purpose and promise and prophecy and preparation but then perfection that which is complete what was in the mind of god before the foundation of the world, before the world was even framed. In Acts chapter 2, brethren, please, Acts chapter 2. And let's go to verse 36. The, the moment came. Now imagine, as Peter said, that not even the angels looked into this. Even the prophets desired to know more. Can you imagine uh, when you think about the mind of God? And we can only imagine because we certainly, we seek to be godly, but we are not God. In Acts chapter 2, let's look at verse 36, brother. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 36. See, when they, when Peter and the rest of the apostles recognized they who, who were chosen by Jesus, they who witnessed at him after his resurrection, they who were divinely commissioned by Jesus Christ, those apostles received power from on high as promised by Jesus. And when they began to teach and preach, Acts 2 verse 36, come on. Therefore, therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly. Let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus. That God the Father hath made that same Jesus, whom ye crucified, whom ye crucified both Lord, both Lord and, Christ. and Christ. So God the Father, His plan has been perfected, completed. God, that same Jesus who was crucified on the cross, God the Father made Him Lord and Christ. Come on. Now, when they heard this, now watch this now. Now, here's the terms of entrance. Now, for those listening, uh, for those who ask, what must I do to be saved? You're getting their answer right now from the Bible. Don't believe me. Listen to the word. Amen. When they heard that Jesus is Lord and Christ, they asked, what shall we do? Come on. They were pricked in their hearts. They were pricked in their hearts. And said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brothers, men and brother, what, shall what shall we do? Now, if sinners prayer, if, just put your hand on the Bible, if asking God to come into your heart, what's God's plan? You hear it right now. Read Acts 2, read verse 38. What did he say? Peter said unto them, then Peter said unto them, repent. repent. Wait a minute, repent. Change your mind. Having heard the good news, the glad tidings of Jesus Christ, you and everyone else must change their mind. Hold your point, Gail. As we said on yesterday, as we finalized our dear brother Leonard Stevens, who was a medic in the United States Army. One of the things we made abundantly clear was this. A medic attends to those who have a physical need. A medic attends to those who are sick. Jesus said in Matthew 9, about verse 12 and 13, a physician doesn't come for those who are well. They need not a physician, but he came for those who need to, for sinners unto repentance. And so recognize this. Why do I say that? Because the great physician is giving you the antidote, the quote unquote vaccine for the infection of sin. Now, how many of us have been sick? Well, if you ask that, well, don't answer out loud. Because Romans 3 and 23 tells us all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we all, and I'm not talking about the pandemic. I'm talking about the sickness of sin, the infection of sin. We all need to obey the gospel. 
No one is exempt. So when they heard this, they were pricked, convicted in their heart, saying, what shall we do? And Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized. And be baptized. Every one of them. Every, why every one of them? Because of the point we just made, because all had sinned. Every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the authority or in the name of Jesus Christ, or for the remission of sins, for the remission of sending away of your sins, and you shall receive, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, of the Holy Ghost namely Son. We're going to come back to Acts 2 and 47 in just a minute. Let's, let's get into the text. In Ephesians 4 and verse 12. So the church is in existence now. It came into existence in Jerusalem as was prophesied, as was promised before, foretold, told before. And so the terms of entrance are now given. But you need to recognize that God would not set something up and not give it specifications. Have you ever, and I'm sure, I know I have, buying kids, gifts, buying them toys, the instruction manuals over here, the toys over here, and I'm in the middle. What do I do? I know what I'm doing. Put the instructions down. I know what I'm doing. Things supposed to go left, it goes right. It's supposed to move, it just stand still. You hear the motor. Because I didn't read the instructions. And oftentimes, let me say, many times, when I didn't read the instructions, it wouldn't go according to the, it, it, its design. You all see where I'm going with this. And so then I would go back and say, oh, I forgot a part. Oh, I did this differently than what was prescribed. And here it is. God never authorized, endorsed denominations. The Church of Christ in Acts 2, as we just read and we went over on Wednesday night Bible study, is in existence now. And the way she is, the way she is organized. And this is where we need to be very mindful and careful, even in the Lord's church, because the quest for power, the quest for influence, is running rampant in the Lord's church. And brothers get creative, as I have tried to do with some of my kids' toys when they were younger. And set up a structure that is not divinely authorized. It is a sad commentary that I've been reading and seeing various congregations of the Lord's church where you got sisters serving on the table. No, sir, no, ma'am. And then there was silence. It's not the way God set this up. Well, brother, I got to call an audible. I gave you guys a trip. Go to 1 Corinthians 11 because they don't look right. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Y'all did this. I didn't. First Corinthians chapter 11. Take me to verse one. I want you all to understand today that the Lord's church, the church of Christ is not left up to how we want to organize it. Perfection. It was complete as God set it up. And what, what, what I'll do today is show you and we'll have to give a little bit on Wednesday as well based on time. Let's go to first Corinthians chapter 11. Very quickly. First Corinthians 11. Give me verse one. Come on. Be ye followers of me. Be ye followers of me, Paul says. Even as I also am of Christ. Even as I also am of Christ. Paul is saying, so again, Paul was a messenger. Paul was an apostle called out of due time. You had the original 12, if you will, the 12, and Matthias was added, then Paul came along, called by God. But now Paul says, no, follow me even as I also follow Christ. Be ye imitators, that word follow, translated into Greek, imitators of me. Drop down to verse 3. Structure, order. Come on. But I would have you know. Paul says, now you follow me as I follow Christ. So again, when somebody says, hey, you're the man. I've had to say to many brothers many times, no, I know the man. That was good like, you're the man. No, I know the man. I'm following the man. And I know that's a phrase, you know, I grew up in the hood. You guys know that you're the man. No, you're the man. Loud. No, you're the man, brother. No, I know the man. I'm the messenger. The servant of his. And I thank God for that. But Paul says that he, Paul makes it clear. First of all, follow me because I'm following Christ. Verse 3. But I would have you know. Come on. That the head of every man. That the head of every man. Is Christ. So let, let's be clear. So it's not my church, Lindsay's church, or Rick's church. No elder is the head of the church. No deacon is the head of the church. No preacher is the head of the church. We're talking about perfection. So the head of every man is, read it again. Christ. Christ, come on. And the head of the woman. Head of the woman is the, man. is the man. So wait a minute now. So in the Lord's church, there cannot be any female elders, female deacons. Because you got to get real perverted for the, for the qualification for an elder to be the husband of one wife. 
Well, no, I'm the wife and she the husband. What? You have to now violate scripture to do that. I'm trying to stay right here, but I need to go ahead and reinforce some basic things as it relates to scripture. We live in a world today where things have been perverted. One wears a suit, the other one wears, you know, the dress. So now that makes you the man and she's the woman. No, sir, no man. I would have you know that the head of man is Christ. The head of every woman is the man. Come on. And the head of Christ. And the head of Christ is God. Is God. So God the Father. So you, you all understand what the Bible is saying? Structure according to now, again, the divine authority is through from God, and we have the message today through his word. And that's why I'll take you to book, chapter, and verse. These brothers only read to reinforce the basic point. The head of every woman is the man. The head of Christ is God. Having said that, in the Lord's church, how did God set this up? Ephesians 4, it's on your screen for your convenience. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. As you think about what this lesson text brings to fruition or brings into play. If you look at the very next verse, for what purpose? For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. That word ministry there, you can make sure you get that translation proper because you look at the word minister, it means servant. Here we're talking about literally the preaching of the gospel. The reason God set it up this way, the gospel, the good news has to go forth. There were no successors to the apostles. There are no apostles today. There was, you know, if you read this Ephesians 4 in full context, it talks about the gifts that were given, the miraculous gifts that were given. These men, these apostles, as you read in Acts chapter, Acts chapter 2, they began to speak in other languages and dialects, tongues. These were Galileans, and they spake in other languages as they were moved, guided, influenced by the Holy Spirit. They did not leave any successors. That's why when you think about Ephesians 4 in full context, I want you all to park in Ephesians 4. Wait for me in verse 4, please. That's where we're going next. I want, I want you all to be ahead of me. So as I teach, I can do this thing seamlessly. Because there's so much content, I want to go ahead and just give you all enough so you can be full. You're not full yet, are you? No. You don't have to answer out loud. I got you. You know, I know you're not full. It's like my grandma, even if we said, no, we're good, grandma. She still make a seat. I don't want to make you read. I want you, hopefully you have a ready mind to accept the word of God and receive the word of God. So here it is. The spiritual gifts that were given. He gave some, not all, to be apostles. If he gave all to be apostles, then, then there's apostle baker right there. That's, that's a lie. Some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists that were missionaries who went out and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Some pastors and teachers. Four the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry, the preaching of the gospel for the edifying, the building up of the what of the body of Christ. Now, what is the body of Christ? So here's this is what I want you to understand today. The body of Christ. Ephesians chapter four, stay in the text. I like keeping it in the same contextual setting because it makes it easy for you to follow. Ephesians four, drop back. To verse number four. I want you to take me from four to six. Read. There is one body. There is what? One body. Hold your point right there. There is one body. Now, you just all hit that pause button. Put your marker right there. Because we're going to mark Colossians 1 and 18 next. That's where I'm going next. I give, I'll let you know ahead of time. It's like when you use it ways or the GPS. You know, I always put it on a full detail. I want to see the next move. I don't like to see what my next turn is. Make a left at 150 feet. Now, I want to know what happens after 150 feet. That's just the way I think. So what I'm doing for you all today, so you can not only write it in your notes, but after this Ephesians 4, I'm taking to Colossians 1 and verse 18. There is one body. Come on. And one spirit. And one spirit. Even as you are called. Even as you are called. And one hope of your calling. And one hope of your calling. One Lord. One Lord. One faith. One faith. What faith are you? There's only one faith. What do you mean? What faith am I? Are you Protestant? Are you Catholic? See what the world has done? Humanistic, pluralistic, this, what faith are you? The Bible says there's only one faith. One body. All right. One spirit. Come on. 
One baptism. One baptism. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Go ahead, son. One God and Father of all. One God and Father of all. Who is above all. Who is above all. He is the supreme. He is the divine authority. Theos, come on. And through all. And through all. And in you all. Let me pause. Make sure you understand who the you all are. Let me go ahead and put that you all in together. Y'all, you know who y'all are in that verse? Paul, know when you study the Bible, know who's speaking, to whom they're speaking, and what they're speaking about. Paul is writing to the church of Christ located at Ephesus. When he says you all, he said all the world. The saved are in the church. And the church began in Jerusalem on AD 33. And the Jews gained interest based on the terms that God set forth. And the Gentiles came into the one body, the one church, based on the terms that God set forth. And today, all of us can be a part, a member of that one body, that one church, through the plan of salvation, the terms that God set forth. Let's pause. One God and Father of all who is above all, through all, and in you all. Give me one more verse. But unto every one of us. But unto every one of us. Is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Hold your point. But unto every one of us is given grace. See, not all of us, not all were apostles, not all were prophets, not all are evangelists, not all are pastors and teachers, but unto every one of us is given grace. Where did grace come from? For the law was given by Moses, John 1, 17. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. When you think about grace, what does grace do for us? As we think about the word of God today, I need to make sure you all understand. I know you should know this, but I will, I will not make assumptions with Christians anymore. You, you go to Bible, because I tell you, Bible class lets you know. Remember, Lynch, we have Bible class, we were pre-pandemic, you asked some questions, like, okay, Gregory Fire and Remission of Sins. Some know, but we, we all need to know. You don't have to quote it, but you got to be able to find it. So one body. So what is the body? Don't answer it out loud. Let the Bible teach us today. What is that one body? I told. I gave you a head, head start. Colossians 1 and verse 18. After that, we're going to Ephesians 1. Colossians 1 and verse 18. What is the body? Read. And he is the head of the body. He, Jesus Christ, is the head of the body. The church. The church. Hold your point. The body is the church. We just read in Ephesians 4 and 4, there is one body. Now, Paul writing to the church of Christ in Colossae, in Colossians 1 and verse 18, who's the head of the body? Jesus Christ. And he is the head of the body. Read it again. The church. The church. Read. Who is the beginning. Who is the beginning. The firstborn from the dead. The firstborn from the dead. That in all things. That in all things, everything. Come on. He might be the preeminence. He might have the preeminence. He is the head of all things. So when Jesus says, seek ye first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Jesus, so again, for your notes, the church of Christ came into existence, AD 33, in the city of Jerusalem, as prophesied, prophesied, as foretold. Now that one body, that one church, had apostles that preceded us. Some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, but the church, we as saints of God need to be edified through the preaching of the God, preaching and teaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It gets even better. That one body is the church. That body, head of the body is the church, the Jesus Christ. But now let's go one step further. When we think about that body, that church. So if the body is the church, according to what Brother Barreras just read in Colossians 1 and verse 18, and he is the head of the body, the church. He is the head of the body, the church. So the body is the church. Amen? Amen? Well, then what's the church? Not a quick fooling with us, Brother Nelson, but let's find out. Ephesians chapter 1, beginning in verse 22. Start at verse 21, as a matter of fact. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Y'all writing this down? Ephesians chapter 1. And I will just go ahead and announce right now we, that CD player has been replaced. There's a brand new CD player, so nobody none of you have to go home and have to repent next week because you can get a CD as you leave. This is for free. Members, y'all know. Ephesians chapter 1, beginning at verse 21. Go ahead and read the Bible. Far above all principality. Far above all principality and power. So wait a minute now. We just read in Colossians chapter 1 that Jesus Christ is the head of the body, the church, and that in all things he, Jesus Christ, might have the preeminence. Now, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 21, far above. Come on. All principality. All principality and power and, power and, might, and might and dominion. And dominion. And every name that is, and hold your point. Remember in Daniel chapter 7, 
when it was prophesied that the Son of Man would be given from the Ancient of Days, capital A, God the Father, that he would be given glory, dominion, and a kingdom? Daniel said that, that the Son, Jesus Christ, would be given from the Father glory, all glory to God, dominion, all authority, and a kingdom, the church. So how can any man, any woman, act like the church belongs to them? And so when you start getting into folks within it, I'm coming back, son. Let me give you some practical application. It is indicative there's something in a name. So when you say holy and reverend is God, holy reverend is his name, but yet a man's going to say I'm the most holy reverend? You, you all see that comparative? And then you got a, a man in a little suit over at the Vatican. A man that they call the holy father. I don't mean you any harm. You may be here today and say, all I know is Catholicism. I want you to know the Bible now. I do not apologize. You need to know the Bible. Far above all, Ephesians 1 and verse 21. Again, it's so good. I want you to read it again. It's like, you know, when you uh, have some biscuit and some gravy, good, you kind of sop it. Let's sop it again, son. Dip it again. Come on. Far above all principality. Far above all principality and power. And, and wait a minute. Take your time. There's a lot of commas there, son. Far above all principality. Come on. And power, and, power, and, power, and might, and, power, and dominion, and power, in every name that is named. There's no authority greater than God. There's no one greater than God. So no man, no woman, no preacher, no elder, no deacon, no trustees, quote unquote, no governing board, quote unquote. We in the Lord's church must adhere, stick to the word of God. When I hear brother, and I've been in meetings where brother talk about, well, I don't know, we don't, we don't know if we want elders. What do you mean? Where do you get that? Well, you get it from the world. Because you want to have that one man leader. That's my pastor. Now, get it in context. Well, he's not an elder, so he's not your pastor. Y'all don't, I guess we got to add lesson eight. Read not only in this world. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion every name that is named. Not only in this world, but also in that which is to but come. But all in that which is to come. Come on. And that's put all things. Here we go. Wait a minute now. So God gave them the power, dominion, glory, and a name above all names. Now watch this now. We're in Ephesians 1 to verse 22, correct, son? Verse 22. Read that again. Come on. And that's put all things. So now the Father hath put all things under his, under his I got to get these pronouns right, under his Jesus Christ's feet. The Father did this. The same God, the Father, who before the foundation of the world chose how man would be saved and through whom man would be saved and where the same would be. The same God had put all things under his, Jesus Christ's feet. Come on. And gave him, and gave him to, be the, head to be the head over all things to the church. Come on. Which is his body. Which is his body. Which is his body. Finish it, son. The fullness of him that filling all in all. The fullness, the perfection, the completion of God's divine plan that filleth all in all. The church of Christ is the church headed by Christ, governed by the word of God, began in Jerusalem. No other institution is unique. Exclusive, distinctive, peculiar. Everything else. Now, I don't know if you all know what the term bootleg means. And I don't have time to break it all down. I'll give it to you in one way. Unauthorized. So you can either watch the real thing or you can have a bootleg religion. You choose. But God has already set it up before the foundation of the world. There's no need for a new and improved hermeneutic. New and improved science of studying scriptures. There's no need for a new, new and improved gospel. The one gospel that saves our soul is all we need today. Let me see how my time goes. I'm doing fine. I'm way ahead of schedule. Hey, man. They're like, well, who's scheduled? <laughs> when the church came into existence in Acts chapter 2, that one, and I hope you get that now. Put those scriptures together. There's only one body. Jesus is ahead of the body, the church. Now we know that God the Father put all things under his feet and gave him to be head of the church, which is his body. Body is a church, church is the body. One head, 
one head, Jesus Christ. Matthew 16 and 18. Let's put, let's put some icing on this cake. Matthew 16 and verse 18, brother. I want it. Let's get it in this particular order. Matthew 16 and 18, and then Acts 2 and verse 47. We recognize when Jesus Christ came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the question, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? Some said you're John the Baptist. You're John the Baptizer, the forerunner. Some say you're Elijah. Some say you're Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But then Jesus says, but whom do you say that I am? And then Peter says, you are the Christ, the same confession that was made by our new brother in Christ. David. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you are that foundational confession. Then Jesus says, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood did not reveal this unto thee, but my father, which is in heaven. And thou art Petros. You are a small pebble or stone, but upon this rock. Let go and read the Bible. Matthew, I'm sorry, it was just getting good. Matthew 16, verse 18. Give me 17 and 18. And Jesus answered and said unto him. So now after Peter made that confession, I was paraphrasing it and quoting some of that stuff, but I want you all to hear directly from the Bible. After Peter made the confession that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, give me verse 17 again. And Jesus answered and said unto him. And Jesus answered and said unto him. Blessed art thou. Blessed art thou. Simon bar Jonah. Simon bar Jonah means Simon son of Jonah. Come on. For flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee. Flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee. Man cannot take credit for this. What? What? My father. My father. Which is, in which is in heaven. Come on. And I say also unto thee. Jesus speaking. And I say also unto thee. Gee, thou wait thou a minute. Jesus speaking to Peter. Peter's not the head of the church. Don't ever let anybody tell you. I've been told this. I was told by a family member of mine who had obeyed the gospel, but was kind of diverted a little bit, telling me that Peter's the head of the church. Well, here's your, if someone says to you that Peter's the head of the church, listen to what Jesus is about to say right now. Matthew 16, 18. And I say also unto thee. That thou art Peter. Now you are Peter. Break it down. You are Petros. P-E-T-R-O-S. The O is long. You are Petros. You are skull. Pebble or stone. That's why they call him Sepa, C E P H A S. You're just a small pebble of stone. Thou art Sepa. Come on. And upon this rock. But, uh, now, why did Jesus use his name in the answer? But upon this rock, Petra, P E T R A in the Greek, means a foundational cornerstone, a foundation, solid ledge of rock. You're just a small stone, Peter. You're not the head cornerstone. You're not the chief cornerstone. You're not the head of the church, Peter. Who would want a liar to be there? Somebody that lies and cusses your head of the church. I ain't talking about y'all, I'm talking about people. God forgave me, thank God. So we're like, ooh, so he's looking at me when he said, I'm looking at the clock. I mean, be careful. Thou art a small stone or pebble, but upon this solid foundation, the confession you made that I am the Christ, the Son of the living God. And upon this rock, that's rock, come on. I will build my church. Jesus says, I will build my church church the church of christ is the church headed by christ read and the gates of hell and the gates of hell the gates of hades shall not prevail against it. shall not prevail against them it shall not prevail against all the denominations it. It. church of christ part seven perfection she is the bride of christ christ has only one bride ephesians 5 i wish i had time he's coming back for her she needs to make herself ready. So everything we preach each and every Sunday about how we ought to behave, how we ought to worship, how we ought to forgive, that's the bride making herself ready because when Christ comes back again, he's coming back for her. He's coming back for the church, the bride of Christ. As we think about the word of God today, I want you to know that those that are in the church. Acts 11 and 26, brother. Give me Acts 11 and 26. Then, then we're going to go over and close in Acts 20. Y'all all right? Yeah. Acts 11 and verse 26. Then we're going to go to Acts 20. And the lesson will be yours. I'm going to give you all the scriptures right now. We're going to Acts 11 and 26. And we're going to take it over to Acts chapter 20. I'm on verse 17 and verse 28. Then let's go ahead and throw Philippians 1 and 1 because they've been such a good audience, brother. I think they'll appreciate that. Philippians 1 and 1, we're going to close with that. The church of Christ is in existence. The one body, the one church is headed by Jesus Christ. It's not left up to other people. How the church is constructed, how the church is organized, must be according to the word of God. 
in Acts chapter, what did I call verse? Acts chapter 20? Verse, give me Acts 11 and verse 26. Acts 11 and verse 20. Lenny trying to get me out of here. He's like, yeah, that's what you called. I, I you skipped one. Pray for these, both of these brothers. I love them. Acts 11 and verse 26. What does the Bible say? Read. And when he had found him. And when he had found him. He brought him up to, unto Antioch. He brought him up to Antioch. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. And a whole year they assembled themselves with the church. And a whole year they assembled themselves where? With the church. With the church. Come on. And taught much people. And the church has to do its job. Teach much people. And they taught much people. Read. And the disciples were called Christians. And the disciples, those who followed Christ, were called Christians. Baptists. Christians. Lutherans, Christians. Methodists, Christians. Quakers, Christians. Christians. What was your point? Christian means belonging to Christ. Amen. Now, some who get married, and this is your business, not mine, choose to bring their maiden name into the marriage. And so they want hyphenated. You get like, I guess that's a half credit. I guess I don't know. There's no Baptist hyphen Christian. Lutheran hyphen Christian. You take on a new name. Christian means belonging to Christ. She's the bride of Christ. Jesus died for it. He built it. He built the church. The word is ecclesia. It means a called out body or assembly. There's one body universally. Believing the same thing. Preaching the same thing. And then there are separate congregations. I don't care where you live. If you're from Dayton, Ohio, like our dear brother Lyle and Lamar Cole. If you're from Dayton, Ohio, from if you're in Jerusalem, wherever you live in the world, one body, different locations. We're in a we're a congregation of that one church. The saints meet here. So ecclesia is broken down two ways: universal body, and then you have your separate congregations. But the, we're the church assembles here in Miami Gardens. Amen. And the disciples are called Christians. Where? First, First in Antioch. Stay in the book of Acts. Go to chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. Acts 20 chapter. Come on now. Acts chapter 20. I want verse 17 and 28. And then we're closing with Philippians 1 and 1. That's it. That'll be enough for today. So I'd like, like y'all know where I'm going so then you can ease your mind and not be stressed in service. Acts 20 and verse 17. Read. And from my letters. And from my letters, read. He sent Ephesus. He, he sent to Ephesus. And called the elders of the church. Now we're talking about Paul. This is Paul in that. And but again, we think about Acts 20, verse 17. And from my leaders, he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. So again, there's elders in the Lord's church, Lindsay. He called the elders in the church. Read. Drop down to verse 28 now. What did he say to them? Take heed, therefore. Take heed, therefore. So be prepared, be aware. Read. Take, unto yourselves. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves. So elders have to govern themselves. Read. And to all the flock. And to all the flock. Over the which the Holy Ghost. Over the which the Holy Ghost. Have made you overseer. Hold your point. So now, the, so that same Holy Ghost says, you know, Jesus said, I will send you a comforter. He will guide you into all truth. And so the Holy Ghost made you overseer. To do what? To feed. To feed the church of God. To, to feed the church of God. We dealt with that on Wednesday. The church of God. There's only one God who has blood. It's not God the Father. In Luke 24, verse 39, it's not God the Holy Spirit. It's God the Son. Jesus Christ has blood. So the church of God, the one who Acts 20 and 28, you're going to read in the same verse. There's only one who purchased the church. It's Jesus Christ through his own blood. So let's stay with the text now. Say, so take heed therefore to yourselves and to all the flock. Over the which all the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God. Come on. Which he, which he Jesus Christ, hath purchased, hath purchased with, his own, with blood. his own blood. Now, if you're taking notes, just write down Acts 14 and verse 23. Why do I have to ask you to do that? Because what Brother Lynch will tell you, what Brother Rick will tell you, is that the Bible lets us know that it is God's divine plan to ordain elders in every church. Acts chapter 14 and verse 23. I'll drive this brother. And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. So now, if you don't have men that qualify, don't put them in. They, they, they should not be elders. But every congregation of the Lord's church should strive to train men. Now this goes back to conduct. So if you've been, if you've been living a raggedy life, then you, you don't qualify to be an elder. So you get into the qualifications of an elder, husband of one wife, you know, with gravity, with sincerity, all these things. 
And sadly, we need to make sure right now these young men and these young ladies, young ladies, you're in this too. Because the last time I checked and come to marriage, that's a man and a woman. Amen, please, somebody. So you marry and I'm marrying Jezebel. Now here you go. But I, yeah, I miss it. It's in my heart, brother. I want to be an elder. Jezebel, Jezebel, I got you running in circles over here. No, brother, sit down. It's happening all across the brotherhood. See, now we get into conduct that we need to govern ourselves, live in a certain manner, and then we can, we can carry out God's plan. And the fact that there's been so much dispute, debate over marriage, divorce, and remarriage, because we failed to follow God's plan. I'm thankful to God I've been married to the same woman for 25 years. Y'all pray for her. Amen. Let me finish my lesson. Folks, they say they man, there's nothing in this lesson until that. <laughs> say, Jesus purchased the church with his own blood. And as we think about what the Bible is teaching us, the, the church of Christ is comprised of whom? Philippians 1 and 1, brother. Let's take it home. Philippians 1 and verse number 1. What does the Bible say? Paul and Timothy. Paul and Timothy. The servants of Jesus Christ. The servants of Jesus Christ. To all the saints in Christ Jesus. To all, wait a minute now, to all the saints in Christ Jesus. Which are in Philippi. Which are one church, one ecclesia universally, but also in different locations, preaching the same thing. So now Paul is writing to the saints at Philippi, one church, different locations. Make sure you get that when you study God's word with somebody. How can it be just one church? How can everybody fit into one building? No. Church is not this physical building. We could be in the parking lot. We could be under a tent. We could be under a tree. But we got to still worship in spirit and in truth, according to God's plan. That's why we don't, we don't go crazy. Yeah, we need a building. We need structure. We're doing things to enhance the building. But we must never be so focused on some temple, some building. It's our lives. Amen. We're the temple of God. So back to your point, Brother Gail, in Philippians 1 and 1, I want to close with this. Paul and Timotheus, or Timothy, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus. If you're not in Christ, you're not a saint. Read, which are at Philippi. Read. With the bishops. With the bishop. Wait a minute. With the bishops. The bishops are elders. Bishop, elder, presbyter, all talking about the same office. A man desires the office of a bishop. He desires a good work. He must be the husband of one wife. So you get into the qualifications on being an elder, a bishop, a pastor. All synonymous to the same office. With the bishops, Gail? And deacons. And deacons. And what did Paul say? Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, God has a plan for man. The plan of salvation is clear. As we think about what God has done, perfection. The church is complete. <clears throat> it doesn't need any editing, amendments, alterations. Let's do God's will, God's way, and call Bible things by Bible names. I began in Ephesians 3 and 21, as, as promised, I will close with the same verse. Unto him be glory in the church. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> if you are here today, I want you to understand that there's power in the blood. We gave you the invitation in the outset. You must hear and believe the gospel, repent of your sins, confess Christ to be the son of God, be willing to be immersed fully in water for the remission of your sins, be faithful unto death, and God has promised you a crown of life. There's power in the blood. If you need to respond in any way, whether you need prayer, for those that are on the Zoom platform, start putting your request in the chat right now. Put it in the chat right now so we don't miss your prayer requests. And for those that are here, the brothers will be coming down the aisle with the response cards if you so desire. We're thankful to God for this another opportunity to preach his word. We pray that things were understood, received in love, because it was certainly preached in love. But most importantly, may we respond based on the love God has shown to each and every one of us. If you need to respond, please come right now as we together stand and sing the song of encouragement. Why don't you come? <laughs>